We all want our UI to feel and look great, just like it does on our favorite games. So you're probably going to want to animate most of the transitions between panels and a whole lot of other elements. If you're a Unity developer, your first instinct might be to create an animator for this. Well, let me tell you, that is not the correct way to do it. The first and most important issue with animators is that it has a pretty big impact on performance, since it makes the canvas dirty on every frame, even if nothing is happening on that frame. Now, depending on the Unity version that you're using, this might be a big problem or a smaller one, since the Unity team partially fixed this in version 2019.3. I say partially because on versions above that one, it doesn't dirty the canvas anymore, but it still does so the vertices and materials. Another issue I find with animators is that it's really easy to end up with a huge amount of them, and even with something as small as a change of a name of a child game object, they will break. So, if animators have all of these issues, what is the solution then? Well, it's twinning. Twinning is a much simpler and efficient way to do animations via scripting, which is also optimized for UI. For this video, I'm going to be using .twin, which can be downloaded for free in the Unity Asset Store. But there are a lot of other great options out there, which all work pretty much the same. Now, let's see a few examples of how you can use a twinning library in your project to have it come to life. In this project, we already have .twin imported and a scene set up with a simple panel that we want to scale down to zero after the X is pressed. In the new script, let's add three public parameters. Our target, which references the transform that we want to scale, the target scale, which is the final scale that we want our transform to take, and the duration to indicate how long we want this to take. Then, in a method called scale, we call the toScale method already included as an extension of the transform, passing in both parameters. Make sure you also add the dg.twinning using statement at the top of the script. Back in Unity, we will attach this script to the panel, set the target to the panel itself, the target parameter to vector 3.0 and the duration to 0.2, and hook up the onclick action of the X button to the scale method. Now, when we press on the button, we will see that our panel is scaling down to 0 in 0.2 seconds. That was really easy, wasn't it? Another really simple thing we can do with a twin is assign an easing to it. Easing functions specify the rate of change of the twinning parameters over time. Objects in real life don't just start and stop instantly, and almost never move at a constant speed. When we drop something on the floor, it will first accelerate downwards and then bounce back up a little bit after hitting the floor, for example. We can recreate all of these easing types out of the box with dot .twin. In our script, we can add a new parameter called easing of type ease, and on our do scale call, just chain it at the end by calling set ease and passing it in the parameter. Back in Unity, you will see the easing as unset. This is the same as selecting linear, which will keep the speed constant throughout the animation, exactly what we saw in the previous example. Now, if we add a button, we can make use of the same scale panel script already and set its behavior so when it's clicked, it scales up the panel. If we leave all of the easings as they are, it looks kind of dull. So for the scale up, let's select out back, and for the scale down, in back. If we take a look at the result now, it looks way better. When you start adding twins into your game, you're gonna need to chain animations or events together. For example, I want this to become available only after this animation is complete. Dot twin lets us do just that with their callbacks. I'm going to be showing here the callback on complete, but make sure you check out their documentation to see all of the other ones available. Back in our script, we're going to add a Unity event called on complete, and make sure to chain it at the end of our twin. Now, when our animation is complete, if we have any callback assigned to that parameter, it will get called. In Unity, I created a second panel that I want to show after the first one is completely shown. I added a second scale panel component on our button, targeting the second panel, and made sure to add our scale method on the oncomplete callback of the first panel. With just that, we can now see our second panel showing correctly after the first one is fully shown. Now, this is already looking super useful. Let's see this in action in a more complex situation. Let's say we have all of these shop elements that we want to move up one at a time, with a small delay in between. We can create a similar script as the one we had before, but instead of doing a do scale, we can do a do local move y, which, like its name suggests, it will move our transform on the y axis on the local space. Now, if we take our buttons, we can assign the script to each one of them, 
and make sure the oncomplete callback calls the next item's move method. If we take a button and we make it its target the first item, it will trigger a chain reaction on the rest of the elements. Even though this works, it's not very elegant and it's error prone. Luckily, dot .tween comes to the rescue again, this time with sequences. Sequences act as a group of tweens, which we can create by code to make our lives much easier. I created a new script called move sequence and copied over most of the move code that we had before. I've changed the target to be a list of targets and also in our move method, we can now create a sequence which we iterate through all of the elements that we have and append a do local move y tween to the sequence and then just play it. Now we can remove all of the individual move up components on the elements, create a new move up sequence on the button, assign the targets to the list and hook up the on click button to the move method. After we press the button, we can see that the sequence is playing out exactly like we want it. On this video, I only showcase a few of the uses of a tweening library, but keep in mind, this can be useful in many other situations. You can fade images in and out, you can move elements across the screen, or animate a health bar going down when taking damage. Another important thing to mention about tweening is that it's not only useful in UI elements, you can use it in your actual gameplay as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it super helpful. Let me know in the comments below if you end up implementing twins in your game and what did you do with them. Also, if you want another easy way to optimize your UI for your upcoming game, make sure you check out this video. See you guys on the next one and thanks for watching.